say, you know, again, welcome everybody uh, to the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada Behind the Bench webinar. Uh, today, I'm here with uh, uh, Tony LaFerrara, and we're going to be talking about building from the back. We're going to be talking about it both from a technical, tactical, and physical perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, we hope that you find this information interesting and, 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 you know, hopefully very relevant for a lot of you as you get ready for your, you know, 2023 outdoor season. And uh, please, again, you know, Tony and I are talking, but feel free, whether it's in the chat or the Q&A box, <clears throat> to share your questions and comments. And we'll do our best to, uh, you know, to get everybody involved and make it as interactive as possible. And of course, later on, you know, before we wrap things up, we're going to speak to you a little bit more about our upcoming convention in April. And both Tony and I, as well as many other coaches, including some top coaches from Europe, uh, are, are going to be coming out there in April to, uh, to deliver uh, uh, both on-field and in-class sessions. And actually, Tony, this is going to be a similar topic to what you're going to be coaching in the convention too, isn't it? Yes, Richard. Well, you know, when I put this thing together, it ended up being two and a half hours. <laughs> and, so, and so I figured, you know what, why don't we do a, a part one, which is just the one we're going to do today. And then we'll do part two and three for the convention. Um, and so today we're going to talk about um, why, why build from the back. Uh, and then next time we'll talk about how and, 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 you know, when and where and all of those other things, more technical and tactical. But this time we'll just talk about, you know, why is it, why should we do it? Or maybe we shouldn't do it. I don't know. We'll let the coaches decide if they want to do it or not, right? All right. So well, we'll, yeah, we'll just on, our case, and then we'll let everybody figure out if they want so, to do it. So, Tony, on that note, then, maybe I'll, I'll just start by asking you uh, why, yeah. and you can use your own perspective or you can just speak about the game in general, right? But why? Why would it be important for coaches, you know, to train their teams and, and, and for players and, 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 you know, teams that are competing? Why should they build from the back? Well, I think if we start, Richard, um, you know, the picture, is, you know, it's worth a thousand words, as they say. I think if we start, we'll be able to answer that question. I'm sure we will answer that question, you know, why they should do it. Um, there is a lot of reasons why I think they should or we should. But, of course, not everybody thinks the same. And we'll see that there are um, uh, teams that don't do it. Uh, as much as other teams who do it almost at every opportunity that they have. They like to build up from the back, right? So, you know, like I said, we'll present mm. some evidence and then we'll let everybody decide if it's a good thing for them or not and why they should do it. So can I get, can I push start Richard and go? I, I, I think so. I think you can uh, click the uh, click the downward arrow and we're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's go. I need to ask you something. So I'm going to do my presentation with the uh, presenter view so that I can see everything. Okay, All right. Is that where you are? Is it good? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, we're going to see the slides as they come up, but it's all good. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll talk about playing from the back and, and you know, we're trying to figure out why we should and why we shouldn't. So before we do that, um, let's differentiate between the two terms, building up play and building from the back. So a build up play is a phase of play when a team has possession of the ball and they try to score while the opponent is in an organized defense. Right. Uh, playing from the back, it's a little bit different. It's, it's, a, it's practiced in the phase of build up play, right? But the difference is that building from the back is a method implemented by coaches who believe that the best way to score goals and win the game is to start the attacks from your own goalkeeper or while you, the, while you have the ball inside the, uh, the penalty box, right? Uh, so there is a little bit of a difference. Now, the only from the back is really nothing new, Richard. It's, it's been around for a while. You know, I was talking with some of the coaches before, um, you know, yesterday and the day before we we're talking about this. And some of them were saying, yeah, but, you know, we just started, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And, and no, it didn't start 10, 15 years ago. Uh, the there is evidence. Rule? Is that what they said? They started with the, with the change to the pass back rule? Or... 
Well, it, no. there was evidence, Richard, and I've been researching it, that back in 1901, that was before you were born, just about the year that I was born, <laughs> there is evidence from the FA, the English FA, that one of the coaches from uh, Sheffield in 1901, you know, he said, uh, and I would like to emphasize this point, he said, uh, linking up play between defenders and midfielders is a good decision. If a defender can feed the ball to his midfielder so he can then push the play up, up the pitch and should do that without hesitating for one second instead of just simply launching the ball long mm -hmm. and, and far with a, big, with a big kick. So even then, they were thinking about you know, build up play from the back and 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 moving the ball um, under control. Um, you know, w w from then we come a long way since then, right? With 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 the, you know, the health and welfare, looking after the health and welfare of the players, and new training techniques, and every now when we talk about soccer, Richard, we talk about we use all of the different terminology like. Uh, pressing, triangles, counter pressing, low block, all of those things, right? Uh, but one word that we're going to use today a lot is overloads. And, and for the sake of this presentation, you know, overloads is going to take a big, um, a big stage in, in our discussion, right? Okay. Um, so in, in, in simple terms, very, very simple terms, uh, if a team in possession has more players, in an area of the field, their chances of moving the ball up the field are increased by a lot, right? Uh, and so um, creating overloads, it doesn't just mean creating an overload at the back when you're trying to build up. Uh, you have to do it in such a way that you're able to create overloads in every area of the field as you're moving the ball up from your defending third into the middle third into the attacking third, right? Uh, you know, and again, talking to some of the coaches um, yesterday, one of them in particular, he says, well, Tony, if it's, if all we're trying to do is create overloads, then what, why don't we push everybody up? We will always have an overload in that game, right? And, well, yeah, you could do that. But from a coaching standpoint, it makes more sense to progress through the thirds in a more calculated fashion, right? Um, it is very important to the tactical theory of buildup that we find a way to overload the opposition in such a way that doesn't compromise the defensive integrity of the team, right? Otherwise, um, I mean, if you can score, if you can, are 100% sure that you can score every time you have the ball, but then would, go for you, it, right? You, you, would, you would attack with all 11 every time, right? Yeah, you would, but... <laughs> yeah. but it, it's not going to happen, right? right. Yeah. And so um, there needs to be a balanced progression between attacking and defending, right? Right. Not have all 11 players run up the field. So overload, yes, you want to overload in all areas of the fields, but you want to do it in a calculated way so that you don't compromise um, the defensive stability of the team, right? If you did that, uh, you, you'd be in trouble. Guaranteed you'd be in trouble. Right. And so this is where, I don't know, if you, did you have, have you ever heard of this guy, Richard? Ricardo La Volpe? La Volpe. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I feel like I remember Rafael Carvajal telling me about him, but you, you need to, you yeah. need to. Rafael would memory. know. Yeah, yeah. Rafael would know for sure. Yeah. And, uh, but Ricardo La Volpe was, uh, um, is an Argentinian, was born in Argentina, but he spent most of his time coaching in, uh, in Mexico. And he's the one that first introduced, you know, so the build up play in a, in a, uh, in, in a methodical way, right? He, he came up with a method and a system to start the build up from the back without compromising, you know, the defensive integrity of the team. Right. And, um, you know, if you look at coaches like Guardiola, uh, Nagelsmann, uh, Tuchel, and hundreds and hundreds of coaches around the world, they have all been influenced by, by this method, uh, which is also called um, the three-man build-up, right? 
Um, Guardiola said this about La Volpe. Uh, we all know who Guardiola is, you know, that guy, right? That guy. <laughs> and he said, La Volpe obligates his teams to play out from the back. Players and the ball advance together at the same time. Uh, if only one player does it, there is no reward, no value. They have to do it together, like couples when they go out together. <laughs> that's that's Guardiola. And like I said, a lot of the coaches around the world have been influenced by his by his method. Thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars, and podcasts, plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.